going down. You're watching another JPL Productions tutorial on Blender 2.8. Everything you see here is downloadable at djplproductions.com, with exception of the building, and they are for free. So all these objects you see, the trash cans, the street lamps, the uh, street lights, the street itself, the curb, sidewalks, all of that is free on our website at djplproductions.com. Today, we're going to be learning how to make this right here. Signal light. So make sure you watch through the whole thing. This is a little bit of a lengthy tutorial, but I'll make it as short and sweet as possible. Um, some of it I'm just going to explain and you know, and kind of talk a little bit through it. So as you've seen already, the tutorial has a little bit of time, about 45 minutes, but it doesn't really take that long. Plus, at the end, I'm going to show you how to animate those lights um, so that that way you can animate them in your animations. Uh, especially if you decide to download these from the website. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit A and select everything or all and we're going to delete everything. And we hit one here so that we can look at this object from the front. There's a couple of things we're going to do with this object. First, we need to go to preferences. It never shows my window here and I don't really know why. Um, and I'm going to tell you a couple of things. First, we're going to search in our preferences box loop tools because we're going to need those here and we're going to make sure that they're on. And if they're not on, make sure you hit the check mark and then that will make them active. So whenever you uh, are needing them, they'll be there. When you right click on an object in edit mode, it will uh, it'll sh be at the top of your menu. Um, so, and mind you, this is a, a video that I put together and I do the voiceovers after, so it's not like I'm going through this live. Um, so what we're doing here is we're going to, in edit mode, we're going to scale this cube up. So we're going to hit S and Z and scale it up. And you see now we've got this rectangular prism and we're going to use this as our hanging street light. Uh, or signal light that you saw at the beginning in the video. We're going to go to our face select mode and what we're going to do here is we're going to do a couple of loop cuts real fast. So control R and scroll up on your mouse wheel to get two of them because we want three even sections. And then click and then right click and it'll replace it where you need it. Now those faces in the front we select all three of them and we're going to subdivide them. Now as you see I'm selecting these inner four circles or squares I mean on each one of those three square sections then we right click go to loop tools at the top and then hit circle and you'll see that we don't have enough loop cuts to make it a circle so or not loop cuts but subdivisions so we're going to subdivide those and then when you go to loop tools and hit circle you see that it makes a pretty nice little circle there so loop tools as you can see when you right click and circle and it's pretty straightforward. So to get that, like I said, you go to preferences and then you go and you search it. I don't know why it doesn't show, but you search loop tools. And when it comes up, click the check mark so you can get those tools active. Um, and that is an add on that's built in. It's free. So you don't have to download it anywhere or anything. OK, so what we're going to do next is we're actually going to select these faces that make the circles and we're going to delete them because we don't want them. We're going to actually make uh, some rounded um, bulbs to fit in there and we're going to color them and all that. So this is a lengthy tutorial, but it doesn't really have to be too long of a process. You can knock this out pretty quick, which you'll see we make this body of this thing pretty fast. So we've already got our circles here and we're going to go about uh, thickening this up in a minute a little bit different than we've done like with our trash can in the past. Um, the reason we did the trash can the way we did was because we wanted to um, learn a little bit about modeling. So we're going to do a couple of different things here. Okay, so we've selected our faces on the side and we've hit I to inset and we've inset all of those. So now we're going to extrude the faces along the normals or along the individual faces, sorry. And the reason we do that is because that will pull them out straight out of the sides. Now you can see we already have pretty much the box that makes the uh, the lights, the, the whole housing. Now we're only doing one side. I know when you see these things, they're usually two-sided, maybe even four-sided sometimes. So it really comes down to your preference and how you want to make it. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're selecting these edges, but not all of it, just the top portion. 
on all three of these circular shapes. Uh, and the reason for that is because we're going to extrude those out a little bit. I don't know if you've ever seen these hanging lights or most street lights in general um, or signal lights. They have uh, like a protector to stop rain and stuff like that from getting too far in them. Now, I only bring these out a little bit. When you actually look at some real ones, they extend out pretty far. So I'm only going to bring these out just a bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring the corners back in to kind of round the edges. So you see here, I brought it out a little bit further. But in real life, when you look at these, they extend out a pretty good ways. So mind you, I'm just doing this kind of out of memory here of what I can think of that, that they look like. Uh, I don't have a picture I'm using for reference or anything. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm selecting these corners on each one of these that I've done. And I'm going to hit three to go to side view and I'm going to bring them back. I'm going to hit G and then Y and then bring them back, bring them back just a little bit. There we go. So you see, we already have the housing for this thing. It's pretty much done. Uh, the majority of what we do today in terms of the, the length of what it's going to take in terms of time is uh, in the top piece, the connector that we do here. So initially, you know, the idea of using a square was sounded simple, um, but then I thought about it, and you'll see here in a second, I'm going to inset this on face mode, mind you, not on, um, not on vertex mode now, on face mode. I'm going to inset this, and I started running into a couple of issues there because of the geometry. And so I was like, uh, well, we could just add a cube in here, which would work just as easily. Um, or, you know, we could mess with this and get rid of all of these faces, which I believe I do. So I'm going to select all of these by holding shift and clicking each edge. We are in edge select mode and we're going to dissolve the edges. Right click and dissolve. And they don't all dissolve for some reason. If you know why, let me know. But you see what happened to our circle is it became misshapen. So the best bet is really just leave it how it is. It's low poly anyway, so there's not like there's so much going on that we need to worry about it. Okay, so what I decided I was going to do here was I was going to shrink that down. And what I did was I actually duplicated that top portion. And then I move it up here. And this right here is really just a waste of time. Because in the end, I decided that I didn't want to do it that way. So what I do here is then I'm going to extrude this up and show you. And the reason I'm showing you this, and I didn't remove this from the video, is because I wanted to show you some of my thinking process. Because you see how easy it is to start, to start shaping this and making something of it. But it just, you know, I look at it and I'm just like, nah. I'm not really feeling it. So, you know, I was like, okay, let me try to make it into a circle. No, let me subdivide it. No, no. Just, it just didn't work. So in the end, I clicked the top and then uh, I actually end up deleting that whole little piece that I just did because it was just kind of ridiculous. You know, if you guys didn't watch the last tutorials, make sure you go check those out. Um, you know, the trash can really gives you the heads up. When you start with a trash can and you realize the way that we built it, uh, it really shows you you can make anything starting pretty quickly. You just have to let your imagination go. So what we end up doing was we do Shift A and we add a circle. We go to add a mesh and we add a circle and then we just put the circle on top here and level it out and then we hit S to scale it down and this looks so much better than that square was doing and it's giving us zero problems so we're in edit mode on this circle in case you didn't know you tab to get in edit mode tab to get out of edit mode in order to add that circle we added it in as its own object now we select the circle we hit f to fill and then we hit e z to extrude it up now we're hitting s to scale it down a little bit now we've hit i to inset it because we wanted to have that that little piece that connects this thing. It's like a rod or something. I don't really know what you would call it technically. Okay, and then we hit E and Z to extrude it up. And now you see where we're at. Now we need to add a portion on the top that would actually connect it to 
uh, the cable or rail. If you saw the animation at the beginning, I just made a simple rail to hold it from pole to pole so that it could be connected to. And um, really, I think most of the time when you see these particular types, they're usually uh, four-sided and hanging above the center of the intersection with some really strong cables. Um, but I didn't want to go that route because, you know, we're keeping this thing pretty simple. This is a tutorial series uh, just to show you how simple it is to start building. So we selected that top circle, uh, the face, and we extrude it up a little bit and hit S to scale it out. And we're just getting our size right. And now we're scaling it in. So we hit S and X to scale it in to make it less circular because the piece on top is going to be like a donut shape but it's not really rounded it's pretty sharpish um, now you know of course if you want to get more detailed you bevel it and all that but we're not worried about that we're just trying to get this general light done so as you can see if you wanted to add the lights on all of the other sides it really wouldn't be difficult it'd be pretty fast um, so we have this whole thing here and it's just about done for the most part. Most of the time here is going to take, uh, it's going to take to finish it, is going to be this top loop. So we add another circle, Shift A, mesh, and add a circle. And then we tab into this. Uh, oh, we haven't tabbed yet. We're going to hit um, R to rotate and Y, and then 90. So R, Y, 9, 0, and it rotates at 90 degrees. Then we scaled it down to about the size that we want this hanger to be. So now we're going to hit G and Z and bring it down. And you see we're just kind of leveling it where the edges meet that, that piece that we top, to, uh, put on the top, the connector. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you know, I'm sure there are people out there who would be completely anal about this and be like, no, 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 you should do this and you should make it where it's all, we're just not going to do all that. We're going to keep this really short and sweet. And so what we're doing here is we hit F to fill. And when you see that it's in the center, uh, we're going to go ahead and move it over. So G and X to move it over on the X, uh, the X plane. And now we're going to hit E and X and we're going to extrude it back towards the other side so that that way we have this uh, this hanger piece. Um, we are going to put a hole in it too, as you'll see in just a minute. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're just kind of getting an idea of how we're going to shape this because you can see that it doesn't sit perfectly um, because you have this block shape and then you have this oval shape. So what we're doing now is we've thickened it up by hitting E and X to extrude it. And now what we're going to do next is we're going to clean this up a little bit because we don't like that look. And even if we're doing low poly and keeping it pretty nice and simple, we still want it to look decent. So we're going to uh, select this thing and we're going to pull it up just a little bit. So if you hold control and hit plus when you select a face on this shape, it will select all of that shape or it will continue to add to the selection until the whole thing's selected. So we're bringing it up and the reason why is because we don't want it to be um, poking out through the shape. We don't want the shape to really intersect too much. Uh, a little bit's all right and you'll see here in just a minute. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to change our selection tool back to the other one. I don't know what button I accidentally pressed but we're going to select these edges and we're going to rotate the edge so that it kind of matches with the angle of the cylinder there that we've created. So let me deselect that and we're going to select this and select that one. And we're going to rotate this by hitting R and X and that will allow us to rotate it and then we're going to shift it a little bit. So we got rid of that top face because we don't need it. So just select that face and then uh, hit delete or right click and go to delete face and it'll keep that whole edge there. So now we're going to go back and we're going to select those edges again. No, we don't need the whole thing. We're just in the wrong mode. So there we go. Edge, edge, edge. Make sure we're just getting the edges that we need. All right. Looking pretty good. Okay. Now we're going to rotate this 
by hitting first we're going to raise it up to match those points a little bit g and z to do that and then we're going to rotate it because you can see where that uh that sharp edge doesn't really come off as being rounded there we go so r and x to rotate it and we're just eyeballing this this doesn't have to be perfect um you know it doesn't it's really how much detail you want to put into it so if you're advanced and beyond this you really might not even need necessarily this tutorial but if you're still pre you know pretty new to blender or to 3d animation um this could be a good tutorial for you to learn how to start building more sophisticated things uh, because after you go from this you know you can start building some pretty in-depth stuff so we rotate this the same way we did the other side and then we G and Z so R and X to rotate it and then G and Z to lift it so it's pretty close to looking even and then what we're gonna do here is we're actually going to rotate a little bit more about right there and raise it up G and Z and then uh, that looks pretty good, pretty good. I think that's close enough. So now this edge, you can see here, it's not really, uh, not really lining up. It's wider than the base. So we're gonna select all of the sides here and we're gonna bring them in. Give me just a second. We're just kind of looking and seeing where these things match up or not. And you know, of course it's not gonna match perfect. Um, but what we, what we do is we're going to connect some stuff together now i was gonna try to weld these together because there's a, a function in there that you can weld it now you see how it's off i'm going to rotate that a little bit more and then g and z to bring it up and then you see how it meshes up pretty nice so it doesn't have to be perfect now the width there we're going to go ahead and take care of and start fixing because you can see that it sticks out now i was going to try to weld this stuff because there's that function in there, like I was saying, but I'm not going to do that in the end. What I end up doing is uh, is just uh, merging the vertices. It just seems to be the simplest way, and we kind of fast forward through that. So I selected these edges here, and then I hit G and X to bring it in where I need it at, and then G and Z to bring it down a little bit, because I don't want it sticking in there too much. Now I'm going to do the same with the other side because we want to try to keep this symmetrical. So you see it's really simple to build this thing. And this part takes longer than building the whole rest of the light. It really, uh, and it's just because we want to connect these things. Okay, so you see we've got those things in there. They're not perfect, but what we're going to do to fix that is a pretty simple fix. Okay, so... All right, sorry about that. I just had to make sure I was doing what I thought I was doing. Okay, so now you see we're in vertex mode here and we're going to select these vertexes, vertexes, vertices, and we're going to actually bind them to that circle by merging them. Um, but first, before we do that, we are going to delete the face. Or no, we're not gonna delete the face. Uh, we're going to change our view, okay? And we see, making sure we line it up, because it's not exact. You see how these are out a little bit further than the other side? So we're actually going to shift those a little bit and bring them in a little bit further. Okay, right there is good. It looks pretty even, so that's good. Then we're going to change our view. You see it looks pretty decent, right? But not quite even enough. So we'll select these, and we'll do the same thing. We'll bring them in just a little bit. Boom. All right. Now you could stop here and just say, oh, I've got my light. But, you know, we want to make it look a little bit cleaner. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Let me grab that one and move it in there. And all right. Looking good. Looking good. Cool. Looks pretty symmetrical for the most part. Not exactly. But, you know, who's counting vertices? Not me. I'm not counting them. I hope you're not counting them because uh, it's a lot of little dots to count. Just saying. Okay. So. We're going to change our view. We're first going to examine this a little bit. Looks good. All right. Looking cool. All right. As you can see, that's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Now, like I said, you could leave this at this and let that be that. But we're going to change our view into our wireframe mode. And now we're actually going to take these and we're going to start to merge these. So if you grab this and you move it, you see, you know, that it's not exactly lined up. So what we're going to do is we're going to select 
two vertices that are near each other and then we're going to right click them and we're going to merge at the last one. So first we're going to select the vertices from the circle and then we're going to right click and merge at last. So select the vertices that are near each other, merge vertices, merge at center, sorry not at last, at center. And what that does is that just brings them together at the middle point that would be exactly between them. So we're going to fast forward through this because this takes a few minutes just going through each set of vertices and then boom, 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 knock them out. And at the end of this tutorial, I'm, at the end of building this, I'm going to show you how to animate the lights. If you saw at the beginning uh, in the animation, the, the lights actually animate and light up. And there's a couple of different steps to that. So, you know, I want to take the last maybe 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes maybe at the most, to actually show you this. So what we've done here is we've selected those faces once we merge those vertices, and then we select both sides, we hit I to inset, and then we shrink them in. Now what we've done is we've selected one side, the edge loop, by holding Alt and clicking the edge to select it and then we've extruded that edge to match the other side and we're doing the same thing here where we now we select the vertices and this time we do uh, merge at last because we want them to match perfectly with that edge without shifting over which is weird for some reason that they were off just a little bit uh, I didn't quite get it because they were lined up but yet they didn't match so we do this so that we can merge those vertices and close this shape off and when we're done with that, the whole thing is almost complete. Um, after we finish doing this, we are going to, okay, last two, boom, right click, merge vertices at last. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, so what we're going to do now, because now you see we've got this loop and it's all connected, it looks pretty good. And it didn't really take that long, it probably took longer because I was trying to tell you about it. Okay. So we're going to tab out and we don't have, uh, and when I say tab out, we're going to tab into object mode. Now we don't have a light in here, so you see it's dark. You can't really see the details of anything, not that there are too many, but um, we're going to go ahead and add a light so we can kind of see what we're doing. But first, we're going to add a UV sphere. This is what we're going to make our bulbs out of. So we're going to leave it in the center. We're going to click the, the object that we made and we're going to hit H to hide it. Now we're going to select the sphere, we're going to hit tab back into edit mode, and we're going to, we are in um, face select mode here, but this works better if you just go to wireframe mode, and then go to vertex select mode, and then uh, select half of this, and then delete the vertices. So when we delete these, you see there's a couple left at the top and bottom, we'll zoom in a little bit, and we're going to make sure we get those and delete them. There you go. Now, this is the face of our bulb. So it's the portion, portion of the bulb you would see in a street light, so, or in a signal light. Now we tab, or we change our view, we tab back into object mode. We're gonna hold Alt and hit H to unhide the signal light housing. And then we're going to bring this forward a little bit. And you can see it's really big, so we need to shrink it down some. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a light and this is the light so we can see what we're doing. So this is just a sun. It has nothing to do actually with the, the, uh, the signal light itself. It's just so we can see better. Okay, now we're going to select that bulb or that half sphere. We're going to hit one to shrink it down because we want it to fit inside of that circle. Now we need to make it a little bit bigger than the circle because when we move it back, it is a sphere, so you're gonna be able to see some of it sticking out. Now you see how much it's sticking out past the little lip that we have, the edge? We're actually gonna increase the size of this some so that that way we can pull it back further and you don't really see too much. So, okay, so in order to move this, okay, so S is scale obviously, so we scaled it down and G and Z, um, moves it up and down, G and Y moves it back and forward, so the green line there, if you don't know already, is your Y axis, so G and Y to move it on that. Now we've moved it back a little bit, and you see it's still not quite right. We want that thing to be underneath it. So we hit three to change our view, G and Y, and we're pulling it back a little bit, okay, 
and we're that looks pretty good now the key to closing the gap because you can see the gap between it without sizing this thing up anymore is to thicken this so first we select it then we hit shift d to duplicate it and then hit z to lift it straight up on the z axis and we'll line it up where it needs to go and then shift d we're going to select the middle one again shift d and then z and we're going to duplicate it again and we're going to bring it down to make the third one bada bing bada boom looking pretty nice pretty nice you know if you guys uh, uh, enjoy these tutorials make sure you do me a favor hit that subscribe button and uh you know let me know in the the comments below what you would like me to make i try to keep these things really simple as simple as possible so that, that way you can follow along if you don't know or if you're learning you know try to make this simple okay so we're selecting the housing now we're going to add a modifier this is one of the first times we've done this in our series we've added the solidify modifier and we've changed the thickness just a little bit and you see it thicken the top portion as well as the entire housing but by doing this we've closed off the gap that is between the bulb and the housing so now it looks more solid, like it's a whole unit, as opposed to just having those things there. Okay, and then we solidify the bulbs themselves a little bit. So we add the same modifier, just click on each one of those by holding shift and click, clicking each bulb, and then go to add modifier, and then change that modifier. Now, with that modifier on, once you're finished setting it where you want it, then you hit apply and it will apply it. So what we've done is after that we've selected all three of those and we scaled them up just a little bit to close that gap a little bit more and that's it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back into the the edit mode of this and we're going to select this top portion because we don't want it to be the same colors. We're going to select the whole hanger that we made by going in here we're going to click on this. First, we're going to select this, and it'd probably be easier if we do wireframe mode. Boom. Okay, wireframe view, and then face mode, and we're going to select all of that. There you go. Got the whole thing. Now we're going to right click, and we're going to go to separate selection. By doing that, it makes it its own object. So now we can hit tab to go back in object mode and change our view back. And now you've got the housing is, is its own piece, and we're going to go to Shader Editor. This is where we're going to add our textures or our colors or anything like that, and we're going to keep this simple and just color it. Um, on some of the next tutorials, we'll be doing UV wraps and things like that. So this thing's going to be yellow for us. Um, most of the time when I see them, they're yellow. So we're just going to keep it simple. And the lip or the, the cover will usually be black um, in most of them that I've seen, I think, maybe some of them anyway. So we're just going to figure out a good shade of yellow. We don't want it too bright. We want it kind of, you know, a realistic darkish yellow. So this looks decent enough. We're going to change our metallic and we're going to increase the value. So it's got some metallic reflectivity. Now with that done, we're going to select the top light bulb and we're going to Shift that down just a little bit, G and C to do that. It lines up a little bit better. And we're going to change the colors of the bulbs. But first, we're going to change the color of the hanger by adding a new material down there. We're going to change it down to a dark color. And I believe we're going to, yeah, it's looking pretty good so far. Okay, that's good enough. We're going to click on the top bulb, add a new material we're going to make this red well the reason that this pause is happening here i had to look it up real fast okay so it's red yellow green so we're doing red and there's a couple of different ways to actually illuminate this thing we're going to turn up the uh the Sorry, I don't know why I just went blank there. Um, we're turning up basically the specular so that that way it has more kind of reflectivity. Uh, we turn down the metallic because we don't want it to be metallic. We want it to be glass actually. So we're going to duplicate this 
and then we're going to apply it to the next one by selecting, click that drop down there for the materials, and we're going to select that one. Now we're going to change this to yellow, and you see we've accidentally made a mistake here. So even though we duplicated it, we selected it and then, and then changed it. So let's fix this real quick. First, we're going to go ahead and adjust this yellow one. So it's actually not yellow, it's amber. Um, anybody you know, should know that by now that does this. Okay, so you see we've changed it and we went and changed the, uh, the thing back. Okay, so you put it on its own material. Now the last one, we do the same thing. We're going to select material five, which is the last one that we duplicated. And we're selecting the amber light, making sure it's on four. Now we're, we've selected the bottom light bulb again and we are putting it on green. Okay, so you see we have a signal light and you could leave it at that if you didn't really want to animate the lights and all that, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and animate the lights. Now that's going to take a couple of things here and I'm going to kind of try to talk through this, talk through this pretty quickly because um, I'm moving pretty quickly. First, we're going to change our transmission and we're going to change that transmission all the way up on all three of those because we want them to be we want light to come through them. Now it takes more than just that for light to come through. Now you can see with their specularity, they already have a glimmer on them from the light with that transmission up. So what's gonna happen here is we're gonna add an emission node and this will actually make the object itself light up. Now we're gonna also add a shader a mixed shader and that lets us blend these two shaders together. So now you see the colors changed. You need to change the emission color to match the green um, for the light. Now when you adjust that up and down you see how it brightens it up. It's actually illuminating that object. Now in order for us to animate this, this is really simple, but we're going to delete that real fast and we're just going to keep this and we're going to test something out here. Um, we're going to add a light in here, and it's going to be a point light because we want to see if this is going to work. Now, the light's already there, but you see nothing's coming through it. What we're going to do is we're going to bring that light forward just so we can see it, and we'll bring it back to put it back in place. We're going to bring it down because we don't want it perfectly centered in the box. We want it inside of the bulb. Now you see we have no light coming through. We're going to start at the top and work our way down and there's nothing coming through it even though it should be and there's a reason for that. There's a setting that has to be set in order for this to work and I'll show you that in just a sec. Okay so there's no light coming through even though it looks like it should be. Now you have to go down to material settings and go to settings and the screen space refraction needs to be on in order for the lights to come through. And transmission also has to be all the way up. If transmission is not all the way up, then it won't work. So we bring, trans make sure transmission's all the way up, screen space refraction is up, and we're going to turn it on for each one of these. And you have to do this with each glass object that you want to have the light come through it. Now, these aren't really glass because we haven't added a glass node in there. And we do need to add a glass node. So as you can see, there's a, there's a light in each one of those because what we did do that I forgot to mention was we duplicated, it, duplicated each light. Um, by hitting shift D and then Z to bring it down to the light where it needed to be at. So, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm kind of flying through some of this. Um, now you see the lights shining around it, but it's not shining through it. And that's because we don't have a glass shader. So I've got that light way up, 5,000 watts, and it's still not shining through. And it's because we haven't yet added the glass shader node and it has to be set on there in order for that to work. So messing with the IOR changes the way the light reflects off of it and we're 
changing. You see, we were messing with some of these settings, the roughness and all that. And we want to leave a little bit of that roughness up so that the bulb itself maintains some of that, um, some of the faces. Because, you know, when you look at these street lights, they're not always perfectly smooth and they kind of have multiple faces so that they reflect light a certain way. So we're turning the IOR down. We're messing with the IOR a little bit here just to kind of see what's going on. So what we do is we're turning the roughness, making sure it's good to go. And you see, uh, there was kind of some issues here, but when you mess with that IOR too much, it makes it very silvery. You see how all of them have lost their color. And it's because the IOR is way up. Honestly, I don't even know what IOR stands for. Now I'm gonna change the light color. Oh, this is, uh, yeah, this is us changing the color of the lights so that that way um, they match how they're supposed to. You don't want just a white light coming through or it won't light correctly. So change the bottom to green, change the middle one to amber or yellow, and then change the top one the same way to red. And then we're changing how much power they each have. Now we're setting it at 5,000. They don't really need to be that high, but we're putting them that high. And in a second, I'm going to turn that IOR down because if you look at them all, now that the whole thing is there, you see that it's just way, they're way too silver and it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't even look like they're actually illuminating. So we're going to uh, adjust this a little bit, the radius of the lights, so that that way they're not expanding out so far because we do want the lights to, oh, and we're going to turn on shadows and turn on contact shadows. I always turn on contact shadows. I don't know if I always really need to, but most of the time I do because it seems to add a little bit more realism to everything, you know, because when light casts on things and they're touching things, they make shadows and they're pretty unique in the way that they are. So you see, we're getting somewhere pretty good. This is looking pretty nice so far, but we do need to adjust that IOR, which we'll do in a sec because uh, that you see that red light. There's no way really that it would physically be able to cast up that high onto there. So it's just not sensible. So anyway, um, we are, let's see, what are we doing here now? Okay, we definitely need to adjust the IOR back down because it's way high. And we also need to add in the shader editors or in the shader editor we need to add in the sorry i'm kind of thinking of what we were doing here when we were building it because um, i deliberately did some of this stuff so that that way we i could explain to you some of the issues you'll run into because it took me a little while and some google searching to figure out how to get the glass to work and uh and it was kind of frustrating at first, to be honest. Um, even though I had done it before in one of the previous tutorials, I've forgotten how to do it. So we turn the IOR back down. And we get our color back. Which we need the color, because we don't want the lights to be silver. Now we leave a little bit, because we kind of want some reflectivity. But we don't want it too high, because you see they just look pretty silver. Okay, we're going to set that to zero and turn it off real quick. All right, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to add the glass shader and we're, oh, the emission shader. Sorry, we're going to change it to green and add a mix shader and then we'll change that light to green or red. Sorry, that's the one we're dealing with. Now, when you adjust this mid-range here to which one you want it to see, you'll see that it makes it either, it shows whichever one the greater side is towards. It shows it based on the percentage. Left is whichever is connected to the top, right is whatever is connected to the bottom. Now, the emission shader, like I said earlier, makes this object light up itself, but it doesn't actually illuminate light. So that's kind of where one of the problems is at. Okay, and we're going to connect this for the other light. And we left that IOR a little bit because they do have some silver reflectiveness to them. Um, 
but we don't want it to be too hot. Okay, so now you see we've got the amber one we're working with here. Looks good. Change it to zero. And now we're going to do the last light. We're going to adjust that IOR real fast. There we go. And we're going to adjust the IOR on the green. Turn it back down. Looks pretty good. Put that light to zero. Now we're going to add our emission shader. And then our mix shader. And you can do this by holding shift and hit A. So that, that way you can get that to pop up. Or you can go to add right there where you see it in the menu at the top of this box. And it will do just the same thing. Okay. And now you can see, bada bing, bada boom. Looks good. All right. Now, here's the thing, is what you didn't see me do here was, because obviously it's not there, is add the glass shader. Uh, by adding a glass shader to these, um, basically we would add a glass shader and add another mix shader. And then, uh, hold on, let me see what we're doing here. I think we might be getting ready to do that. Oh no, this is where we're going to animate it. Okay, so if you add a glass shader, it'll let that light shine through that, through each one of those bulbs. For some reason, I forgot to do it, but um, on here. Uh, but when you see the animation, and that's at the beginning, that was actually done. So the light shines through the bulbs itself, as opposed to just lighting it. So in order to animate this, we go to our timeline so that's what I've pulled up here is our timeline now with our mix shader we're going to start at our first keyframe our first frame and we have our light set to 5,000 boom we just set it now we hit I while we're hovered above that on power and you see it as a keyframe we're gonna go to frame 60 we're animating at 30 frames per second so this is gonna be on for two seconds we're gonna turn on ambient occlusion in our scene settings okay uh, not in scene settings but in a basically not our render settings the box right above it I can't remember what it's called for some reason anyway oh yeah we're setting in already render settings 30 seconds um, per 30 frames per second sorry I'm kind of all over the place now we're going to take that and we're going to select that light again here in a second Right now we're selecting our light. Now we're going to add another keyframe just by hitting I again on that same spot. And then we've moved over to frame 59. The reason for that is because we want the light to be on all the way to 59 and on frame 60, we turn it off. Now, if you don't do that, what happens is it gradually fades off instead of just turning off. So, and you see, we turn that emission all the way, the mix shader all the way down to the left so that the emission shader is turned off. And then we hit I to animate that. Now you have to do that in 59 and 60. So in 59, frame 59, you hit I and the mix shader to leave that thing on. And in 60, you turn it off all the way to the left and hit I again. So in 60, now what we're doing, now you see 59, right? It's all the way, it was all the way on, and then 60, we're moving it, we're on the yellow light, we're turning it all the way up. I know this sounds ridiculous. So basically, it, what we're doing here is we have a time frame that the light is set to on, and each one of those is keyframed. And then the very next frame, we keyframe it on the off setting or on a different setting. So 5,000 watts, boom, it's on on frame 60. Whereas on 59, it's set to zero watts. So on 59, or to, in order to set it, you just hover above the power box where you're setting the power and hit I. Boom, just like that. So now we have frame, what is it, 119 that we have the light on, right? 
and it's set all the way to the left in the mix shader. Okay, now we're going to move to frame 120 and we're going to turn it to zero, the power to zero. As you can see, hit I and the very next keyframe, boom, there you go. And now we're going to do the same thing that we did with the green and amber with the red in 119, 120. We're going to turn the mix shader all the way up towards the right so that that bulb is bright red. We're going to hit I on 119. We're hitting I because we forgot to on that last one. Okay, so 119 or 120, we're setting the power on the light to 500 watts. Now, the reason we, we're doing the mix shader and then the light and the mix shader is because we have both of those things illuminating. Boom and boom. There you go. All right, I hope that wasn't too confusing. If it was, let me know in the comments. I need all the feedback that you got from me, baby. Okay, and uh, make sure that you go visit the website. You can download all of these objects for free, thejplproductions.com. And uh, I hope that this is worthwhile for you, and I hope that you're able to grow with me as I am growing and making these for you. So make sure that you check it out. Let me know in the comments below if this has done something good for you. Make sure you pound that, that like button or not the like button, but the subscribe, you know, there it is. So make sure you check us out and catch the next one and uh, let me know what you want me to make and I'll show you how to do it. And I'll try to keep it simple, I promise. Much love, thank you guys for watching and uh, 